While this chapter may be a blessing to every Soggy Yoichi fanboy out there, Benedict Grimm supporters on the other hand are crying themselves to sleep tonight. Let's share our condolences in the comments for the loss of yet another NPC in the league. What's going on ladies and gentlemen, my name is Anamasu, and today we're going to be taking a look at Blue Lock Chapter 258, titled Combine and Invent a New Weapon. If you enjoy the Blue Lock manga or simply like my content and would like to support me, please make sure to click that subscribe button, comment below your thoughts, and check out my other social links for Discord and Patreon down in the description. Without further ado, let's get right into the aftermath of what happens when Blue Lock's metal detectors fail to work, and Isagi sneaks a Glock in to protect himself from Itoshi Rin. Starting us off, we have intro text which says, Isagi has tied the game with a spectacular mid-air volley. As he leaves Kaiser and Rin in the dust, the world erupts in amazement as the ball smashes into the back of the net. We firstly hear do see another angle of Isagi's shot piercing into the goal as the announcer seemed to scream out in excitement. We also see the people at home watching the NEL along with their reactions of amazement with friends, family, and even Isagi Yoichi's very first fanboy blown away by this strike. The announcers can literally call this nothing more than tremendous and otherworldly, because with his mid-air direct shot, Isagi Yoichi has leveled the game at 1-1, putting Bastion Munich's very first point up on the board. This amazing double spread celebration panel is shown here too, with Isagi clenching his fist and screaming out in excitement, staring directly into our souls as the reader. Also, this angle of the aftermath makes the shot in celebration all the more disrespectful, because all of his rivals are in the vicinity just left watching and helpless, with Rin and Kunigami even stuck viewing from the ground. Hitoshi Rin and Kaiser surely waste no time though displaying their feelings on this goal, as both players take up an entire page to just scream out in anger. While the page itself just screams edgy and emo sports manga, it's even funnier when you realize that while Kaiser's eyes are whited out, Rin's dumbass is his emo bangs covering up his eyes in tears of sorrow. Other people's reactions too are then shown to us, with Kirisu firstly just baffled at Isagi's new two-gun volley technique. I would have to say Tokimitsu agrees as well, because he's over here stuttering like a Scooby-Doo character, calling Isagi a m m, -m monster Raichi per usual is cementing himself as the vibe merchant of Bastion Munich, because he's getting turned the fuck up for this equalizer. The final two people shown on the page are both Nanase and Shido Ryuze, who seem to be impressed by Isagi Yoichi's continuous evolution. Smirking and singing after any goal as usual, Shido even just straight up says it was a fantastic explosion in his eyes. The tone however has to immediately shift back to emo though, because as Kunigami walks away from Isagi with his back turned, he snarkily tells him to not expect any more passes or assistance from him. He even adds some fuel to their separation by calling Isagi nothing more than an overly dependent egoist, throwing shade using this man's biggest flaw. Isagi however just lets that slide right off, immediately firing back that they'll just continue to duel and devour one another as always. Yo Yori however can do nothing but celebrate with a big old grin on his face, sprinting in from behind and leaping up onto Isagi's shoulders. All he can ask his buddy for is an explanation on what the hell that shot was, because everyone seems to find it either completely amazing or infuriating. It really just depends what side you're on. Isagi, however, being the humble go he is, just daps up Hiyori while redirecting the compliment right back by calling his pass epic. The two are just super wholesome and amazing on the field, which makes me really happy to see, considering Isagi definitely needs some positive support to counter out all the hate he receives. Streaming out with questions like a curious little kid, Hiyori asked for a description of just how much he visualized and pre-planned for. Starting off with Hiyori's no-look alley cross, he obviously didn't predict it down to the specifics, but rather just believed in his buddy to send the perfect pass. As for Kunigami's role in this matter, Isagi explains that he adjusted his plan to account for him after realizing his current mindset, wanting nothing more than to contain and lock down Shido, sprinting up and down the entire field. Isagi knew that Kunigami and Rinsuke's odds of being involved in a near-clutch situation would be very high. On top of that, Isagi also states that he might have been the only person on the field to truly believe that Kunigami would win in his duel against Shido. This is some W friendship right there, because even though his homie switched up and went all emo, he still believes and trusts in his boy to get the job done. Anyways, back to their conversation. Hiyori recaps this just to have been a combination that only Isagi could pull off, being finished out with an ultimate trump card created on the fly. In a funny ass sequence of panels here, Isagi just hits the thinker pose for a second, to then awkwardly tell Hiyori that that was all wrong. To the shock of his buddy, but probably none of us, Isagi explains that he most definitely did not plan on scoring using the twin gun volley play. He goes on to say that he fully believed he would be wide after breaking through all the defense, not at all expecting Rin and Kaiser to just have massive hate boners. Due to Dumb and Dumber, Isagi was forced to improvise under the pressure, as he actually explains exactly what gave him the hint to pull off that move. Nagi Seishiro's attempted juggling shot that we all theorized or basically confirmed to be the inspiration for Chapter 257's Twin Gun Volley. 
Yuri does recall this shot from watching during the Manshine match, as the image of this shot seems to have been stored within Isagi's mind ever since seeing it. He attributes this to as the reason why even with Kaiser and Rin killing his options, he was able to subconsciously improvise and recreate the shot on the fly. Yuri and Isagi then kind of laugh and joke about how he straight up stole Nagi's bag, but at the end of the day, game is game. It wasn't completely created from Nagi's creativity and shot attempt, because Isagi sprinkled in hella sauce, his own direct shot, and actually scored the damn goal. To further flex the twin Glock aura art, we get a badass panel here of Isagi posted up with both pieces behind him. The weapon will officially be known as his ambidextrous mid-air quickdraw two-gun volley, but uh, I'm just gonna shorten that shit to two-gun or oh shit, Isagi's got the strap. Yuri then goes on to further glaze Isagi in this chapter by examining how truly amazing this weapon is. No matter which direction the defender comes from to block his shot, he can just respond by faking the mid-air and shooting right after their timing has been destroyed. This will also make it nearly impossible for the goalkeeper to figure out when or what foot he will shoot with. With a grin on his face, Yuri confidently states that if Isagi can just consistently recreate this shot, then he'll become the unstoppable striker he's aiming to be. This realization in Isagi's mind immediately causes his eyes to flare with ego and aura, because by combining these two pieces, he's really created an incredible weapon. I was totally expecting a different route for Isagi's development and goals in this match, however combining, recreating, and adapting multiple new weapons is pretty badass too, so no complaints from me. Noanawa's reaction to the goal is then finally shown too, as all he has to say is just excellent Isagi Yoichi. Staying pretty emotionless per usual, he announces that Bastion Munich will now be switching things up with a formation change. Now that the past two successful attacks have been centered around Isagi Yoichi, Noah believes this formation and system should also shift to be a more Yorchi centric system. Benedict Grimm is immediately told to get his bum ass off the field. As Corona runs a leaps up and is told to get in on the action, I cannot tell you how excited I am to see Corona, Hiyori, and Isagi all occupying the field at the same time, because Galaxy Hotline could be upon us. Let me know what impact or plays you are all expecting out of Corona, because I know we have a ton of Sharkboy fans that are watching today's video. The only downside of Corona coming in falls on the likes of Kaiser and Ness, because without having Grimm on the field, Kaiser literally only has one passing option to support him. While that's tragic and all, I can't say that anything more can be expected, considering the difference in how Kaiser and Isagi have performed in the last two matches, and also the growth of their dynamic. With Corona sprinting on the field as Grimm walks off in anguish, Isagi realizes how dramatically the team's dynamic shifted from just his one goal there. Obviously, we know this change also comes from his opening and winning goals in the Ubers match and his consistent impact to their offensive pushes, but hey, W's all around. He also knows that Noel Noah trusts him to score goals and bring them to victory, and now with Corona on the field, Isagi will have a far easier time controlling this game. His buddy holds up a peace sign to symbolize the number 2, as he urges Isagi to go with him to get his second goal. Thinking deeper on what will actually happen though, Isagi realizes that if he does score another goal within this game, he'll actually crush Kaiser completely and firmly take over Bastion Munich. If he can just score one more goal after that though, completing a full hat trick, then he'll finally surpass Hitoshi Rin and become the undeniable best player in the new Egoist League. We see that the team's logos are flying all around him in the background in the flow of his aura, as a mirage of Hitoshi Rin just stares in the background. With the opening goal, new weapon and Noah's trust, he believes that he can now see it clearly. He can visualize perfectly the image of himself becoming the best player in the world. With his fists clenched and twin clocks once again shown, Isagi seems to be more confident than we've ever seen him here. In a cold ass one liner to end off today's chapter, Isagi simply just rushes them to hurry up and restart the game. The egoist is ready to go back and get this well deserved hat trick, and obviously pretty hyped up too. The outro text here for today's chapter says, With the creation of a new weapon, a stronger ego emerges. Yeah, that's literally all it said, and I mean at that point, why even have an outro text? The upcoming title for chapter 259 is revealed to be Challenge the Impossible, which I personally think to be in reference to Isagi's near impossible challenge he's chasing of a hat trick versus PXG. Let me know if you guys have any differing thoughts or theories, because I'd love to hear them in the comments down below. But that being the end of today's chapter and video, I just want to thank you all so much for sitting through the entirety of today's video. If you want to stay up to date with Blue Lock or just enjoy my content and want to support me, please make sure to click that subscribe button, comment below your thoughts, and also check out my community discord and patreon down in the description. I hope you will go on to have amazing days or nights, and I'll see you in the next video which will more than likely be my personal ranking of every Isagi Yoichi goal in the entire series.